we're back here in Madrid again with the Trash Talk TV, and uh, we're just bringing legends in here. And we got another legend in, Ray Stevens, former mm -hmm. top player from England. And uh, Ray, thank you for joining our show. Um, England is having a lot of success in Madrid, Ray. Do you have any explanation why these English players just suddenly is winning? No, not, not just qualifying for semis, but like taking finals, the chance of winning the gold. Yeah, the, um, it's particularly mixed they're strong in at the moment. I think they've uh, come good in uh, men's doubles as well. I think um, someone like Anthony Clark, who's uh, now in the final of the uh, mix and he's got a semi-final of the men's doubles, he's just a player that's playing very, very well and worked very hard to get his game uh, up to its top level for the right event. But, but, but can I be quite, quite honest? I never really been seeing Anthony Clark as a top men's double player. I've seen a guy who, who can challenge the top and might, might pop up, but I never experienced, uh, ex in my wildest dream, imagine this guy should make the world championship final. He's I, got I, a wild dreams. I, I, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you surprised that he's making the final? Not when he's playing on a hot streak. Um, I can remember Anthony five years ago. And uh, you see players uh, come to the fore and uh, they get strong. Uh, what you're saying about Anthony Clark, I could say exactly the same thing about uh, Jonas Rasmussen. When I first saw him, um, I didn't think he would ever be a world champion, yet he, he became one of the strongest players in the world. And I think that if a player carries on working at their game, they can do it, but they need to work on a daily basis and each day try and get the edge. But I mean, let's be honest, don't you think that Anthony, I mean, his, his doubles partner, uh, Rob Blair, and his mixed partner, Donna, I mean, Donna is maybe the best uh, net killer in, in the world. Don't you think that the partners have, have a lot to do with it in this case? I mean, he's a great backup player, but he, I wouldn't say he's the star of the team, would you? you know, I, no, I beg to differ there. I think that he is uh, a really strong member of the team, and I think he's uh, hitting, hitting really well. So we, we, we can have a different opinion on that. I see Donna as sometimes quite a fragile player. I really do that if you keep, keep uh, the rallies going. And uh, I think that um, you're saying that she's one of the best net players in the world. Yes, she was good in the forecourt against a very good Asian player there. But um, uh, I would say Gail Enns is uh, probably the, one of the strongest uh, net players that I can okay. think of. Actually, it's kind of funny that England has this history of producing uh, always good mixed players. I mean, I mean, always throughout, you, you know, you had uh, Simon and Joe, you have Nathan and Gail, now, now you have Donna and Anthony, you had, I mean, just going back and back, Nick uh, Ponting. Nick Ponting, even, I mean, you, you played some mixed, didn't you? Or I, or? I played mixed, I won the Danish Open, uh, beating World Champions in the final there, so uh, um, I played mixed, but I was really predominantly a men's doubles and uh, men's singles player. Um, you know, we do have a very good uh, tradition of mixed, and you could go way back. Uh, and I think that has a, a lot to do with it. That when you yeah, when you think right? that uh, you're good at a, a, a discipline, then you keep on expecting success. And expecting success and aiming high is what a lot of what it's about. Because actually, Jamie Paulson, a uh, former Commonwealth Games gold medalist from yeah. Canada, said to me that said to me once that the reason why England has such good mix is that there's not enough courts and uh, the, the guys uh, bully the girls so that they don't get to play. They have to play, uh, they just have to play mixes. So that was a long while ago. I mean, we, we So there is truth to that, okay. There, there, was, there was truth to that then. <laughs> but I mean, uh, we have courts now, we have facilities and everything. And we still really can't produce men's singles players. It's, um, it's uh, really that there's a tradition in mix that we put a lot of effort into it. Uh, we're very good tactically at it. We have good coaches at it. It's it's uh, a discipline that we're strong at. Oh, I have a question. Like, uh, um, of course, you, you say you always have the good tradition in men's doubles, but where I really see that these uh, that England started to produce, like in modern time, the highest results was when when England got this Park Hill Bong as a coach. You were you were working uh, with English players, as far as I remember, when Park was there. I was, w was he a guy that like kick-started these Simon Arch and Nathan Robinson, and even Anthony Clark was been coming on there? Uh, yes, um, Park Hill Bong was a great coach. Uh, one of the best that I've come across. Very, very disciplined. Um, uh, got the players uh, working um, in, in a very good system and uh, expected um, more than the players could give. I think he was a coach who would uh, absolutely give everything and the players couldn't match up to his... Um, because I heard that some of the guys like Simon and Nathan were, were having some clashes with Park about the, absolutely. The, the method of training. Absolutely, because uh, when, when you're Asian, uh, Korean, Chinese, Indonesian, uh, 
the, the coach that you're under, say like Park Ju Bong, uh, it's really like gods. Uh, so, so you have to do what they, they say, and uh, you see this all the time, particularly from Korea, where uh, they the, the, uh, carry the bags and uh, they go to the coach bow and everything like this. Um, well, he wasn't going to get that so from the English. Not no, no, he's not bowing park. to uh, anyone, you know. So it, it, he had a very, very difficult job, and there was lots of clashes. There was. But, but, but Simon peaked when Park Bong was. Uh, uh, as, uh, when I remember, like Simon was based in 99, 2000. 99 in Copenhagen World's uh, 2000 Olympics. Absolutely. That's where he peaked, and that's where Park Geo Bong. Uh, I, I don't yeah. know, was he there at the Olympics? No. He was at the Worlds in Denmark. And he, was it was at the Worlds in Denmark in, uh, I think it was 1999, wasn't it? And Simon got a silver in the uh, mixed and a bronze in the men's doubles. So you're about right. That, and I can remember before that in the European, uh, men's doubles was having a really good showing at that time. But I, I actually heard that Park was taking out Simon in practice, playing with Dara yeah. sometimes. Stuff like that. Is, that, is that right or, or have you seen that? Kind no, of no, uh, actually, yeah, that he could take, I mean, um, I know this is going on record, you? I but uh, he could beat any of the top men's doubles players with anyone, including Colin Horton. It was the singles player, and he could be um, <laughs> he could be the top mixed doubles pairs of uh, of uh, Simon Archer and Joe Good, who who was the best then with any girl. Did did piss them off? Absolutely, and uh, I, I can remember when I was a bit out of badminton, I was watching a semi final of uh, All England, and I think it might have been Nick Ponting that was playing, and I was sort of relaxing in in, in my armchair and watching the TV, and I was watching this semi final, and I'm thinking. This guy hasn't made a mistake yet. I'm, so I looked at my watch and I thought, how long before he makes a mistake? Ten minutes, and he still hadn't made. Are, are we talking about your uh, Park? Yes, and uh, it was. <laughs> I mean, he really was a phenomenon. I, I, I actually heard that that the the current uh, uh, national coach in Denmark, Steve Peters, said that Park Yo Bong was at his best. It was like you only had one serve because serving to him was impossible. Mm. Yeah, but serve, receive, but also his flat play. His flat play was, but you know, he had very good partners as well. I mean, uh, his men's doubles partner was a fine player as well. Oh, there you go. Really good. What? Uh, okay, let, let's let's go back a little bit to the to the because you actually used to play before uh, China. Absolutely. I mean, what, what, what was what was your your years uh, like your career uh, approximately? Wow, um, I had a uh, thirteen year international career and. Uh, it was, a, it was a wonderful um, era to play in because um, uh, I was when the game went professional and open and uh, also when China came into the game. China came in 82? Uh, 82, 82 I think that's correct. And it went open before that. Um, but we actually toured China before um, in 76 and they came over to us and they really kicked us. They really, kicked, really? Like what was it like, like back in the day? Because like, China, you didn't play the Chinese unless they were touring and then it was yes. a professional tournament. I mean, what was it like playing these guys for the first time? Were they really... They were so quick. They were, so the, they were a different pace to us and I can remember them beating real top Danes like 0 and 1 and stuff really, like, like that. Who was the top Danes at the time? Or? Fleming. I can remember Fleming playing Tang Shen Hu. And he said, they won't like my backhand style and everything. You got love and one. <laughs> and I, I, I can remember a story that... Um, was he world champion at that time? He was, yes. Yeah, I mean, you're talking the best. And they, uh, in fact, <laughs> I, I, I can remember Derek Torbert and Julian Jilts, who were the top mixed pair in the world. Yeah. And Tang Xian, who took a Chinese girl, just stood her in the corner and beat them to six and six. Uh, okay. And so they, they were quite... In fact... I can still count them as some of the best players I've seen. I know you won't believe that, but Tan Shin Hu, Ho Cha Chang, and uh, Fang were three of the best players that I've ever seen. Really, like you compare them to Lin Dan, and so I mean, how can you compare yeah. with the? I mean, with uh, I the think Lin, I, I think Lin Dan is quicker. I think Yang Yang uh, was quicker. But you know, uh, you, you can say how much the game has uh, evolved and it's got faster, fitter. To me, the top level of the game is uh, very high. Um, I think. The biggest difference between when I played and uh, the game that I'm going to say today, the shuttle moves around the court quicker. Mm -hmm. Players have learned to move the shuttle much quicker with shorter strokes and uh, move with pace. And the general level has raised incredibly high. Yeah. You know, the bottom the, of the bottom, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you, and this has actually happened if you think of Hen Jawan and people like this. Because if they had slight injuries or something like that, they've got into qualifying. They haven't even got through the qualifying. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you know that of uh, tournaments that um, you'll have seen. The level is so high that 
you, I mean, you, you look at uh, uh, Lee Chong Wai. Uh, everyone's just how quick and everything like that. He's not here now. You know, he, he's out of the tournament. That, that's how the level that we're playing. Peter Gay, how fantastic he is. He's not in the semis. You know, it, it's uh, it's the well, level is quite incredible. Yeah, when I used to look uh, when I looked at some old draws, like even from '85 and so on, when you look down the first rounds, you'd see Yang Yang giving one and one, two and two the whole way. Uh, nowadays, you see uh, Taufiki's going uh, three sets with uh, and uh, absolutely so. And I could walk into a championships and say, right. I'll get to the quarterfinal and then I've got problems, you know, and that, that's what it was like. Now you, you don't have that luxury. If you've got a qualifier, you, you have to look at the qualifying draw and you have to say, uh, who's coming through? You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and worry. If we, we had a qualifier, we would just say, uh, easy day. <laughs> okay, I, I want to ask some, some Danish questions. So what Danes, you, you, you played through, you know, like I said, a quite a long period. So what were the best Danish that you played? You, played, you used to play with Fleming. I played them all. Him, or? I played them all. Um, Sven, I used to love playing his own Sven. He, Sven was, he, was, he was a fantastic player and a great, great character. I mean, if there was a drift in a uh, hall like this, he'd tell them to shut the doors. He was, uh, you know, and he, he was larger than life character. He was wonderful. I played against Morton, and yeah. um, Morton was a wonderful player, great mental strength. Um, it was good. I'd like to put on record now that I've beaten Morton because he always says I hadn't. Yeah. But uh, I beat him in uh, Swedish. International tournament in the second round, and I beat him in uh, England v Denmark match. So, Morden, you got that. Oh, but we're bringing Morden on, and, and, and just also I played Fleming quite a few times. Did you ever so beat Fleming? Or? I beat Fleming as well. So I beat the top Danes, but they beat me. They kicked my ass plenty of times as well. Okay, but Ray, uh, you played Fleming the, the year he won the World Championship. Right? I did. And there was this famous story that he uh, he showed up late for the third game. Yeah. And he actually was about to be disqualified, and you were like saying, "Hey, let's play." You could have disqualified him. I, I could have disqualified him, but well, it, well, I'm going to ruin this story now. I'm going to ruin this story because I was actually asking the umpire that, uh, hey, have you looked at your watches uh, coming up to time? He looked at his watch and it was five minutes. And he said, no. And all I wanted to do was when Fleming come back, that he had uh, words with the umpire so I could get the first few points or something like that. And uh, he didn't. He said he was disqualified. The referee said he was disqualified, and I said, no, I won't take it, then you can dis disqualify me as well. But really, the truth was that I was trying to use a psychological ploy to get him into, uh, so I could get a few points. But it all backfired on me. And what it did to Fleming, because Fleming had just won uh, an All-England Championships, and he, um, he was uh, on a down, really, yeah, yeah. but it kick-started him. All of a sudden, he was, he was out, and then he was back in, and he... Uh, Really livened up, and he was fantastic from there. But but it's not ruining the story. We just want to ask you, like, why didn't you just take it? I mean, I I, 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 I can take it, and, and as you're walking off the court, say. Uh, no, yeah. that's because that wouldn't be me. Let, let me put it the other way. Is this is also where I, it changed now? Do you think if Lin Dan show up late for for a third set against Peter Gate? Peter Gate, Peter Gate would take it, and also his coach would tell him to take it. Now it is it is it is different in that way. Okay. Um, since we're talking about men's singles, I also want to go around the the English men's singles because they are like, in fairness, in a little a little slump right now. They you guys were pretty high one time. You had Darren Badley, Steve Butler, Andrew Nick Wilson, Yates, Nick Yates, all at once. Were you you even still there? I, I was. I mean, I was in the um, sort of the. You had a guy called Kevin Jolly as well, and I mean, I've already told you my results against uh, top Danish players. Um, it, we, we were there, but. I can think when I when I was uh, playing top McCraft men singles, I was putting in five hours a day. I was working harder than the players were working. But I mean, out. nowadays uh, the funny thing about England is that you have Amir Gafar. He's actually originally from Afghanistan, right? You have yeah. Nick Kidd. He's originally, originally from uh, Australia. Australia. You have uh, young Carl Baxter. He's from originally from Canada. Yeah. Uh, you know, Andrew Smith, he doesn't even live, I mean, he, 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 oh, he, he travels around the world. But an enormous amount of funding goes into Andrew Smith's uh, badminton. I mean, uh, he, he probably had £20,000 plus spent on his badminton per year. A lot of people could be good on that. But, Bobby, I was asking Okay, okay, go on, go on. This uh, young players you have in England, this, this Ulster and Smith, because they are obviously the young ones. I mean, I will be fair to say I don't see, I will say I don't see America far making the World Championship Olympic final. These are the young hopes in England right now. Do you yeah. see them good enough to break through and be like top guys, we're talking top five in the world? 
No, I don't. I don't. I don't. They, 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 they've not got the ingredients uh, to do it. If U- Usif has got talent, and he's got a very good um, body shape to uh, uh, to go a long way in the game. I think um, a lot of top class singers players now are tall and uh, long, got good good reach, etc. So, so where, where, where do you see? Uh, let, let, let's stick with Usif because he is. I assume that the one they're depending most on breaking through because he's a junior, European champions, and everybody's talking about how good he is. Where do you see his limits? Where do I see his limits? I see, I see his limits that he could get perhaps to semi-final of the European Championships and something like that. So we're uh, talking like an Anders Bogesen, Nils Christian Keller? Uh, he, he'd be uh, fortunate if he got up as high as them. I mean, I see Anders uh, and uh, Nils. Yeah, as, Anders uh, the but, but, yeah I was going to say, uh, top 10 players. Um, i would see him as perhaps he could get to top 20 at some time. Now, also uh, recently uh, in in English history, you say that Richard Vaughan from Wales was actually the top British he player for a long seven. time, right? He got yeah. to seven, so uh, playing uh, Brazilian Open, Argentinian Open, and every soft tournament he got. Plus, well, he, did, he he did he, he he was a great player, and he does um, play tough tournaments results. as well. I mean, he but he knows how of... to work the ranking list, which yeah. is going to be eradicated, I believe, with. Uh, new point systems etc but there is soft ways of playing it's changing it's changing but there, there was soft ways. so, so uh, you know you know the English system you worked in it uh, um, where do you see they should make significant, significant changes and able to um, to make top players to, to, well to make top players they're making top players with uh, the, the, their I'm double system but if you talk their single it, system singles I'm talking about. you can make top players If you have a small nucleus of players who all have the same desire to get to the top of World Badminton, I have seen top players playing in an empty hall as though it was a semi-final of an All England. But you need an intensity of practice that is you, that you're saying like if you two players and I know you're both very fine singles players, but if you were there, you have something on that match. You have something saying, "I've got to wash all your dirty washing," or "I've got to, we'll uh, play for a poke or something like that." And it puts some. You need something to put some bite in the match. So that's what you used to do, like uh, in, in your Absolutely. day, for, exa- for example. Like, uh, who did you used to train with? Uh, I, I had uh, Kevin Jolly, Billy Gillen, people like that. But we'd do two v one. Billy Gillen, I mean, uh, is his intensity that high in training, or what? Well, if it, if uh, if you you're even playing, no, I mean, B- Billy's. Uh, a great guy and if, if you talk about him uh, way back you play to his strengths right so he, he had good angles on his shots he had uh, real fast play uh, so you you perhaps play him in a flatter style than uh, you might play a good singles player you know so you play on his strengths but and you might even um, play condition games so, so that uh, you can only play certain areas of the court or something like that Morton Frost uh, told me once, you're talking about having something at stake when you're playing. And mm. Morton Frost told me that like, the, the first three years he trained with Fleming Dills, Sven mm. Fried, they say, we're playing for a bottle of red wine, a set. And mm. he said the first two years he didn't have a chance of winning. Yeah. Were, you, were you doing the same to the young players? Same, same type of thing. Same, so you have same. a lot of red Did wine? Did you yeah. trash no, these no, young no, guys no, down? No, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> not a lot of red wine, but um, you ha- have to understand that uh, badminton is such a competitive game. And to get to the top, you have to be so competitive. So everything there should be a competition on. Now you can put it into sports science, and you can say, right, we're going to time your runs, we're going to see your body fat, every, everything like that. Or you could say, um, right, uh, the first one that can do this run over a distance and and get through, then uh, you know you have something on it. Buy some coffees or wh- whatever. But I'm just talking about somehow you've got to raise the intensity. Would you say generally the European standard is going up or down compared to Asia? I think it's uh, you, you keep on getting changes. It, if you, if you looked at this um, uh, championships, um, you'd have to say that it looks like it's going up. Mm. But uh, you could go to another championships, and uh, it, I, I think uh, in men's singles, uh, the Asians and if in the ladies' game, the Asians are moving ahead. I think in uh, the doubles. Uh, Areas uh, where um, uh, s- s- somehow the uh, physical element gets taken a bit more out of the sport than w- than we are closer. Okay. What, what about? I just want to uh, the last question. I want to turn the new scoring system. Like you being with the the old scoring system for ages. What do you think about the new scoring system? 
Is, is it good or bad for the, for the sport? Is it I think, it's, I think it's good for the sport. I'm a purist. I love the game as it was. I love the, uh, the battles. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I liked the game as it was, but I think for TV, then um, uh, we're going in the right direction with this scoring system. But I would like to say that, yes, that's wonderful for the top uh, level of the game, but someone who's playing in a local club in, uh, in Denmark or something like this, who plays, goes down and plays mixed or something, perhaps they should uh, be the old scoring system because they enjoyed their game like that. Mm -hmm. but okay. That's a view. Well, uh, Ray, uh, we just want to thank you for uh, showing up uh, today and, and do this with us. It was amazing to hear these uh, stories from you. And, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be back again uh, next time with Trash Talk TV. Maybe for us. Thank you.